in Washington, we have our own volcano threat in the Cascade Mountains, which on average erupts once or twice every century. Rising more than 14,400 feet into the sky, Mount Rainier's imposing summit is the product of millions of years of relentless geological forces, buckling, folding, and warping of the Earth's crust that slowly thrust this volcano into prominence. To the people of Washington State and visitors from around the globe, the snow-capped giant has long been a symbol of the Pacific Northwest's beauty and power. Its rugged slopes, carved by more than two dozen major glaciers, lure hikers, climbers, scientists, and photographers. Yet behind that serene facade lies a complex and potentially dangerous volcanic system, one that scientists monitor with unwavering attention. In April 2025, that vigilance took on new urgency. Deep beneath the icy crown of Mount Rainier, a swarm of unusual earthquakes began to rattle the geophysical instruments stationed on its flanks. These were not the shallow, seasonal tremors, often linked to glacial cracking or surface rock movement. Instead, many originated far below, at depths of 10 to 14 kilometers, with waveforms suggesting the presence of pressurized fluids or molten rock. The pattern was unlike anything recorded at the mountain in years, sparking discussions among volcanologists about whether the volcano's subterranean system was undergoing a subtle but important shift. Rainier's reputation as a sleeping giant is well earned. The last major magmatic eruption occurred over a thousand years ago, but scientists stress that dormancy is not the same as inactivity. Fumaroles still vent steam and volcanic gases from the summit and upper slopes, indicating a persistent heat source deep underground. Continuous monitoring by the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, and the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, PNSN, through seismometers, GPS stations, tilt meters, gas sensors, and satellite observations is designed to detect the smallest changes in the volcano's behavior. The mountain's greatest hazard is not lava or ashfall, though both are possible, but lahars, fast-moving volcanic mud flows formed when volcanic activity or structural collapse rapidly melts glacial ice. Such flows can thunder down river valleys like the Puyallup, Nisqually, and Carbon at highway speeds, destroying everything in their path. Geological records show that historic lahars have carved deep channels and buried lowland areas under meters of debris, with over 3 million people living within the extended hazard zone including communities such as Ording, Puyallup, Sumner, and parts of Tacoma. Even a moderate event could have catastrophic consequences. This vulnerability is why Rainier consistently ranks high on the USGS list of the nation's most dangerous volcanoes. It is not frequent eruptions that make it hazardous, but the deadly combination of steep topography, immense ice volume, active geothermal plumbing, and dense downstream populations. A single day of unrest, if it triggered rapid glacier melt or slope collapse, could alter landscapes and lives across Western Washington. When the April 2025 earthquakes began, scientists initially thought they might be part of normal background activity. But the swarm quickly escalated. Within days, the frequency of quakes increased and their epicenters migrated subtly northwestward. Some occurred at intermediate depths between five and eight kilometers and displayed low frequency, long period waveforms, a hallmark of fluid movement, whether magma, superheated water, or volcanic gases. The presence of earthquake multiplets, sequences of nearly identical tremors repeating at regular intervals, further intrigued researchers, as such patterns are often linked to pressurized fluid pulses or structural resonance within a volcanic system. To better understand what was happening, scientists turned to advanced tools. Machine learning algorithms combed through continuous seismic data, detecting faint low amplitude events that might have been overlooked by manual analysis. This revealed a complex interplay of localized pressure zones within a confined crustal volume, hinting at the possibility of a narrow conduit or shallow magma sill, adjusting to new conditions. While there was no immediate sign of magma rising toward the surface, the data suggested that Rainier's internal plumbing was anything but quiet. 
The April Swarm differed sharply from the mountain's typical seismic background. Ordinarily, Rainier experiences one or two small quakes per week, most less than five kilometers deep. Many are seasonal ice quakes, concentrated during snow melt or periods of rapid glacier movement, and they rarely form persistent clusters. In contrast, the 2025 swarm lasted weeks, reached unusual depths, and produced waveforms that pointed toward magmatic or hydrothermal processes rather than surface ice dynamics. Between April 12th and May 1st alone, over 120 events were recorded, roughly 10 times the monthly average. The seismic behavior also showed signs of harmonic overtones, a phenomenon sometimes caused by fluids vibrating within subsurface cavities. Such signals, combined with the westward and upward migration of events over time, indicated a pressurized system slowly adjusting or venting. For volcanologists, these details are critical in assessing whether the system is simply self-regulating or moving toward an unstable state that could produce surface effects. As the swarm unfolded, the USGS and PNSN intensified monitoring. Portable seismometers were deployed along the western flank to improve detection accuracy and help pinpoint source locations. Continuous GPS readings were analyzed for subtle signs of ground inflation or tilting, indicators of magma intrusion or pressurized fluid movement. Thermal imaging from satellites and drone-mounted infrared cameras scanned for localized heating, while summit gas sensors tracked. At the time, gas emission rates and ground deformation remained within normal limits. Yet scientists stress that the situation demanded continued scrutiny. Subtle changes in gas composition, such as shifts in the CO2-SO2 ratio, could emerge over days or weeks and satellite-based radar interferometry was brought in to cross-check GPS readings for consistency. The aim was clear, to detect even the smallest warning signs before surface unrest began, giving nearby communities the maximum possible lead time. The April 2025 activity sparked debates in the volcanology community about what could be driving the unusual earthquakes. While shallow quakes at Rainier are often attributed to glacier movement or minor rock fracturing, the depth, duration, and seismic signatures of this swarm pointed toward processes much deeper in the crust. Experts narrowed the possibilities to three primary scenarios, each with significant implications for the volcano's long-term behavior. The first, and perhaps most striking possibility, was magma recharge. In this scenario, molten rock from the mantle slowly rises into a mid-crustal reservoir beneath the volcano. As it intrudes into surrounding rock, it exerts pressure, fractures solid layers, and displaces fluids, generating earthquakes. This kind of recharge can unfold over months or years without leading to an eruption, but it can also represent the early stages of renewed volcanic activity. Even without a direct eruption, such intrusions can alter the chemistry and pressure of the hydrothermal system, potentially triggering surface changes. The second possibility involved disturbance within Rainier's hydrothermal system, a complex network of superheated water and volcanic gases circulating beneath the summit and upper slopes. Changes in pressure, temperature, or permeability within this system can create swarms of small quakes, particularly at depths between 5 and 10 kilometers. If new pathways open or old ones collapse, fluids can surge or shift, creating repeating seismic signals like the multiplets observed in April. Hydrothermal systems have been known, in rare cases, to produce explosive events when steam pressure becomes trapped. While there was no evidence of such activity at Rainier in 2025, the behavior of the swarm matched patterns seen in other volcanoes where hydrothermal dynamics played a central role. The third scenario considered tectonic stress transfer. The Cascades sit within a complicated regional stress field, influenced by the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate beneath North America. Movements along the subduction interface or adjustments in fault zones can redistribute stress, 
sometimes triggering seismic swarms in volcanic systems without any direct magmatic involvement. In recent years, subtle tremor episodes have been detected beneath Glacier Peak and Mount St. Helens, suggesting that regional stress shifts could be affecting multiple volcanic centers simultaneously. To untangle these quakes is the trend possibilities. Scientists leaned heavily on cross-disciplinary data. Continuous GPS and tilt measurements sought evidence of deformation, while thermal imagery from drones provided high-resolution surface scans capable of detecting changes of less than one degree Celsius. This level of precision allowed for the detection of subtle warming on snowfields, rocks, and fumaroles that might indicate increased subsurface heat flow. Gas monitoring focused not only on absolute emissions, but also on the ratios of different volcanic gases, which can offer clues about magma depth and composition. As of early May, the combined dataset suggested heightened activity in the deep and mid-crust, but without the clear upward movement of magma that would precede an eruption. While the science teams worked on interpretation, the broader concern lay with the communities downstream. Rainier's hazard maps, based on geological history, LIDAR scans, and hydrological modeling, paint a sobering picture. In the event of a lahar, whether triggered by eruption, glacier collapse, or slope failure, fast-moving slurry could reach the Puget Sound lowlands in under two hours. In some valleys, such as the Puyallup, warning times could be as short as 45 minutes. These flows would follow established river channels, sweeping through towns, farmlands, highways, and critical infrastructure with the destructive force of liquid concrete. Past events provide stark reminders. The electron mud flow, believed to have occurred about 500 years ago, left deposits tens of meters thick and traveled more than 50 kilometers from the mountain. Another ancient event, the Osceola mud flow, reshaped much of the Puget Sound lowlands. These flows did not require large eruptions. In some cases, Structural collapse of part of the volcano, combined with glacier melt, was enough to unleash devastation. Modern emergency planners view such non-eruptive lahars as a major risk, given Rainier's massive ice cover and the steep gradients of its valleys. To improve preparedness, Pierce County has been working on upgrades to its lahar warning system, aiming to provide earlier alerts to residents in hazard zones. Sirens, Automated alerts and evacuation routes are part of a multi-layered approach intended to maximize the short window of time between detection and impact. Drills and public awareness campaigns reinforce the need for readiness as the physical geography leaves little room for delay once a lahar is in motion. For scientists, part of the challenge lies in interpreting whether deep seismic activity is part of a long-term magmatic process or a temporary episode. The swarm in 2025 bore little resemblance to earlier unrest episodes at Rainier. In 2009 and 2011, smaller swarms occurred, but they were shallow, high-frequency events near the summit that eventually faded without... The 2025 swarm, by contrast, was deeper, more organized, and persisted longer with waveform similarities suggesting a consistent underlying mechanism. Adding to the intrigue, the swarm coincided with a regional uptick in volcanic seismicity. Mount St. Helens exhibited renewed unrest and Glacier Peak recorded subtle tremor episodes. Whether these were connected or simply coincidental remains uncertain, but some researchers suspect that shifts in the regional stress field, potentially linked to deeper tectonic or mantle processes, could be influencing multiple volcanoes at once. For now, the official alert level for Rainier remains, quote, normal. There is no current evidence of magma reaching shallow depths, no significant ground deformation, and no unusual gas emissions. Yet, the swarm has served as a potent reminder of the mountain's active nature and the need for constant vigilance. Even without an eruption, Rainier is capable of generating hazards that could threaten thousands. 
For communities in the shadow of the mountain, awareness and preparedness remain the best defense. By mid-May 2025, seismic activity beneath Mount Rainier had slowed somewhat, but scientists cautioned that such pauses did not necessarily indicate the end of the episode. Volcanic systems often behave in fits and starts, with bursts of unrest followed by quieter intervals. In many documented cases worldwide, such cycles have preceded larger changes, while in others, they have faded without consequence. The key, researchers emphasized, was not to interpret short-term quiet as long-term stability. The April swarm had demonstrated the value of a multi-layered monitoring network. Real-time seismic data, high-precision GPS readings, satellite-based radar imaging, infrared thermal surveys, and continuous gas analysis together formed a picture far more detailed than would have been possible even two decades earlier. These tools allowed scientists to detect subtle changes in the volcano's behavior, identify patterns in earthquake locations and depths, and compare current conditions with historical data. As new information came in, teams adjusted their models, testing whether the observed patterns fit better with magma recharge, hydrothermal disturbance, or tectonic stress scenarios. One of the challenges in public communication during such episodes is balancing caution with reassurance. For many residents, social media posts and dramatic images can quickly spark fears of imminent eruption. This was evident in late April, when a morning cloud formation briefly made it appear as though Rainier was venting steam in significant quantities. Photos spread rapidly online, accompanied by speculative commentary. The National Park Service quickly clarified that the apparent plume was just a cloud bank passing over the summit, but the incident underscored how easily public perception can shift during periods of heightened scientific attention. Emergency managers stress that readiness should not depend on immediate signs of danger. Lahars, Rainier's most significant hazard, can be triggered by events that give little or no warning. A sudden slope collapse, for example, could occur without prior seismic buildup. This is why communities in known hazard zones are urged to maintain evacuation plans year-round. Schools, hospitals, and care facilities conduct drills to ensure that, should alarms sound, people know where to go and how to get there quickly. Infrastructure planning also takes hazard zones into account, with some critical facilities located on higher ground or outside mapped lahar pathways. For the scientists studying the 2025 swarm, the episode offered an opportunity to refine predictive models. Machine learning techniques applied to seismic data allowed for the detection of low-amplitude, repetitive quakes that might otherwise have gone unnoticed. These, in turn, helped map the likely pathways of fluids or magma within the crust. In combination with gas ratio measurements and precise ground deformation data, researchers could better assess whether the system was accumulating pressure or simply relieving it in slow pulses. The broader geological context also played a role in their interpretations. Rainier is part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, a chain of volcanoes stretching from Northern California into British Columbia. These volcanoes are fueled by magma generated as the Juan de Fuca Plate subducts beneath the North American Plate. Regional tectonic activity, including slow slip events along the subduction interface, can subtly alter stress fields in the crust, potentially influencing volcanic behavior across multiple centers. Some scientists speculated that the 2025 seismicity might be part of a wider adjustment affecting the arc as a whole. For now, the most important message from the experts is that Mount Rainier is active, but not currently on the verge of eruption. Drop your thoughts, questions, and insights about Mount Rainier in the discussion. Share this with friends, family, and anyone who lives in or is curious about the Pacific Northwest's volcanic landscape. Stay informed, stay ready, and never underestimate the power of a sleeping giant.